Dr. Sandra Laura Kramers, and I want to show you some cases of patients that have lost their meibomian glands. The meibomian glands are oil glands that produce oil to keep your tear on the eye longer, and they're essential for you not to feel your eye. Please don't forget that you should never need feel your eye. You should be blinking and living your life without noticing your eyes exist. If you notice your eyes exist more than 50% of your life, that's very serious because it's your eyes telling you, I'm producing scar tissue. And we're realizing this now because finally we can see where the scar tissue is forming. So I wanna show you what this looks like. So any type of redness, burning, reflex tearing, itching, foreign body sensation, pain, you need to let us know. And you should not just learn to live with it. We really wanna get rid of it before it becomes too late. So the meibomian glands are all located in kind of like vertical lines on the lower lids and on the upper lids. And this is what it should look like. They should look like almost very thin lines. People have compared to piano keys. The white lines are filled with oil. And the oil is omega-3 essentially. That's why we always encourage you eating fish oil and omega-3. This is what we're born with usually. We have about 30 to 40 meibomian glands, probably about 30. And as we age, and sometimes there's medications, issues that can cause the glands to start to scar, and then they can disappear, and then some people have the loss of all the glands. And this is stage three, that's usually on the worst side. I've seen patients, which I'll show you, that have no glands at all, so we call that three plus. The goal for us is to save your glands, and in a way it's a race against time, because if we see you forming already scar tissue, or you have a loss of glands, if we don't do anything, you can end up like this patient. And almost all these patients have some type of pain, some type of signs of dryness under the microscope, and often scar tissue on their cornea. If it gets very severe, it can actually decrease vision from scar tissue. So I wanna show you what this can look like, and we'll do some close-ups here. So uh, this is a stage zero, which is normal. And this is a stage three where you can see just a little bit of glands left. We know that medications like Accutane can cause this chemotherapy, radiation. We know that rosacea makes the glands go this direction. But my theory is that excessive computer use can do this too, especially in children. And I wanna show you some cases. Other things that can cause this loss of glands are things like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, scleroderma, uh, other autoimmune diseases. So we're trying to figure out why this is happening in a bunch of children. So I want to show you this. So here is uh, what a couple of our children have looked like that have come in, some patients. And it's hard to see, but you can see some blood vessels going on the cornea. This is the eyeball. Here are the eyelashes. And here's the cornea. And you see these blood vessels starting to cross over onto the eye and cause scar tissue. So just an example. And here is one of our patients we had in the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is a seven-year-old girl who we, she was complaining of uh, foreign body sensation and some redness. And her mom brought her in and she had some corneal scarring on the surface of the eye with a decrease in vision. And when we did the, the lip of view, you can see that there's no glands at all. I wanna show you again <clears throat> what normal is, kind of putting side to side a little bit. So here's normal, I don't know if you can get a close up there, Tara, uh, of the meibomian glands. Here's advanced meibomian gland loss, and this is this poor seven year old. And so when we asked the mom, questions. She had no arthritis, no dry mouth, no joint pains, no uh, problems with her body. And it turns out she started baby Mozart when she was a baby on TV. And she's been on the iPad for about four hours a day since she was a baby or very young, maybe a year old. And so that's the only risk factor she has. We're waiting for her blood test to come back, make sure she doesn't have anything like rheumatoid arthritis or Sjogren's or scleroderma, uh, anything like that. But we, if everything is negative, there's a theory I have that in some patients, not all children, but in some patients, if they're on the computer all the time and they're staring, which we know people do, they do not blink, then it causes the glands to not work as well. And in her, she doesn't eat vegetables, her diet is very poor, uh, she's a lot of carbs and sugar. So that combination might be the issue of why this is happening. Okay, we have another patient, 10 years old. This is a girl who came in with corneal scarring, decreased vision. And you can see here, the glands are present, but there's some of them are atrophying, some of them are very irregular. This is her upper lid, and this is the lower lid. You can see she's starting to lose a lot of glands. So we actually had to scrape the cornea and put a special amniotic membrane on the eye trying to restore her vision because the, the, the staining and the growth of blood vessels was so severe. And that helped, <clears throat> but we were trying to figure out why. Same thing, we're waiting for the blood test to come back. She really had no signs or symptoms of Sjogren's, no arthritis, no dry mouth, um, on the computer all the time now at school, <clears throat> also at home. So I think that combination is really having a, uh, causing a problem in a lot of kids. 
an 11 year old uh, girl also same thing uh, had scar tissue on the cornea a lot of foreign body sensation redness and her glands are almost disappearing here she also had a scraping and a prochera and I want to show you a 16 year old boy who is uh, Asian wonderful boy wonderful family he's on the computer all the time he loves video games his mom says on the weekend he's on the video games at least four hours a, a day uh, at school there's computers at home there's computers He's not blinking and he's losing all his glands and we don't think these glands come back. We're doing some stem cell research or we're starting to think of doing stem cell research where we inject the glands with stem cells but this is really theoretical, experimental. We wouldn't do it obviously in a child but that's all we have. There's no other options to regenerate these glands. Once these glands are gone we don't have any way to bring them back except for this hypothesis I have that stem cells will help. Upper lid, same thing. You can see has a little bit left here and none here. So we're in a race against time to save these glands. So they're on a very high omega-3 diet, warm compresses every day. We're thinking of doing lipoflow flow on them, anything to kind of keep what they have. And of course, a really good green leaf vegetable diet, humidity, blinking, blinking, looking away at the computer, artificial tears. Some of them are on autologous serum already. It's crazy that they're kids and already needing this. So we're really trying to uh, talk to parents about advocating for their children to not have computers at school, or if they have computers, to really educate them how they're supposed to use the computers, which means blinking at least 30 to 40 times a minute, which is hard to, to learn if you haven't done that already. And then the last case is an 11-year-old girl. She came in, had some uh, what we call SPK, or superficial punctate keratitis on the cornea, signs of dryness. And we did the lip of you, and you can see there's almost no glands left, just a little bit of scar tissue left. And this was my first patient that I saw with this. And I was so scared when I saw her, how, how young she was, I ordered a Sjogren's test right away, even though she did not have any dry mouth or arthritis. And I, when she came back, her blood test came back very positive. And I said to her, the mom, are you sure she doesn't have any arthritis or joint, you know, dry mouth? She said, no. I said, does she have any muscle aches, any back aches, any? She said, oh yeah, she's been having back aches for about a year now. And I said, what what happened with that? Well, her pediatrician sent her to physical therapy, and now what we found is her rheumatoid arthritis antigen is positive, so we're concerned about that, and her ANA is positive, so we're worried about lupus or rheumatoid juvenile rheumatoid arthritis in her. So we're trying to figure out which one she has, but the fact that she was having her symptoms in her eyes is very important for um, moms and dads not to miss. Uh, if you have coworkers and friends, please let them know to not ignore this, because once those glands are gone, we still don't have any treatment. And I just wanted to share those with you.